Sophie, is that an introduction? I mean, it is because you did it. So, well, <laughs> welcome to America and also to podcasts. Why I'm Robert you, why, Evans. What? What? Welcome I feel to like you're America. turning from. <laughs> I feel the? like you're turning from podcast daddy into podcast uncle. Well, <laughs> and the vibes are just of you like do 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 do. Is he drunk? And then dinner all of a sudden is like America. Oh. <laughs> and also, if you look at him, his nose is all pink right now. Yeah, yeah, that is I mean, huge uncle vibes. Thank you, thank you. We are back, and we're going to be talking today, as we did uh, one of the last times we talked, about Ben Shapiro's 2013 book, Porn Generation, How we're Social back. Liberalism is Corrupting Our Future. Yeah. <laughs> we're back, and we're drier than ever. <laughs> yeah, Let's we are, we are do it. bone dry. Now, Sophia, obviously, because I returned the, the Kindle edition of Ben's book last time, I had to go get it again. And as I was typing into Google, I mistyped the title because it's porn generation. I typed generation sex into the title. And lo and behold, guess what? I got a result for a Ben Shapiro book from 2005. Now, when I look at it on Amazon, it's called Generation Sex Explo- <laughs> Exposing the Full Frontal Assault on American Innocence. Full Frontal um, Assault. What a I title. Know. I know. Um, you now, know, the only thing, <laughs> the, <laughs> the only person that knows less about uh, pleasing a woman than present day adult Ben Shapiro is 16 year old past Ben Shapiro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking child Ben Shapiro. Well, I don't know. How, when was he I born? look forward to finding out how he hedgehogged a bunch of ladies' cervixes while fingering because he did not <laughs> know how to fucking curve his fingers. What a All right, he was born in 1984, Philistine. so he would have been what? 21. This would have been 21 year old Ben oh, Shapiro. Oh, yep, don't trust him. Yeah. Don't trust so, don't let him near anywhere near a vulva. What are you doing? Certainly not. Um, I, I don't want him exposing anything uh, of himself. But uh, he published this apparently in 2005. It's 320 pages, published by Thomas Nelson, Inc. Amazon says that there was only a hardcover available, and the book is currently unavailable. They don't know when it will be back in stock. We have if to you ha- haunt it on eBay. If you have a copy or find a copy <laughs> of Ben Shapiro's 2005 book, Generation <laughs> Sex, I, Sophia and I, and I think we can speak for Cody Johnston in this, would would very much appreciate getting our hands on that little bastard. Um, the, uh, we I, don't I do mean w- Ben Shapiro. We mean no, the book. No, we mean the book. <laughs> I do want to read the Goodreads summary of this book because I found that. (laughs) (laughs) Who would? I love this. let's, Let's dive in. American society, according to Ben Shapiro, is a sex machine. From movies to sitcoms, rap to rock, teen mags to porno rags, American culture has become a pusher of promiscuity and perversion. And in this sharp, audacious, fearless book, Shapiro, the most prominent young conservative in the nation, reveals the gross over-sexualization of our society and how it targets youth culture, from early education, or rather indoctrination, to the disastrous (laughs) world of sex, lust, and immorality that pervades our high schools colleges and beyond by clearly identifying the problems many unnoticed or ignored of an out of control mtv culture overly sexual ad campaigns and an overly permissive mainstream media shapiro illustrates the dangers and devastating consequences awaiting today's kids who are in essence being sexually assaulted on a daily basis shapiro also provides real solid and often drastic solutions for what we can and must do to stop the corruption of america's youth God damn. I'm sorry, sexually assaulted? That is deranged. (laughs) Among other things, how out of touch do you have to be in 2005 to think that MTV is a major force in youth culture? (laughs) Again, 2005. I remember, too. I was in high school in 2005. I don't know anybody who watched MTV except for, like, my Gen X cousins. Okay, I was in college. That hurts. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) But the point is, yes, that's incredibly out of touch. And also, 
I cannot imagine being more out of touch than <laughs> referring to anything as a sex machine. Yeah. When you're 21 years old. I mean, and I know he was like, this is a fucking killer pun. Yeah. Like, this is fucking sick. Everyone's going to want to be my best friend. It's it's really going to blow up my social calendar. Yeah. I mean, and again, as we've noted, like his, his premise is as inaccurate here as it is in his 2013 book. Like, Young young people are less promiscuous than previous generations uh, for a variety of reasons, which we don't yep. need to l- litigate now. But the data is incredibly consistent on that point. Yep. Um, and yeah, it's I I want to read this book. Uh, there's something horrific to be said about uh, the fact that he he talks about how the kids being exposed to I'm guessing Janet Jackson's boobs at the Super Bowl. Um, are being sexually assaulted. Um, the fact that he considers, I don't know, th- th- everyone not wearing Puritan garb to be sexual assault is offensive for a lot of reasons and says a lot about Ben Shapiro's mindset. But, <laughs> yep. um, yeah. Also, I just love uh, the life experiences um, of a man that have been so sheltered and adorable that he can use a sexually assaulted phrase so liberally yeah. without thinking about it even a little bit. Anyway, Generation Sex on uh, on Goodreads has 12 ratings, an average of 2.58 out of 5. Um, so sounds like a good book, Ben. 2.58? Yeah. That's a lot higher. That means someone went over 2. That yeah. does mean someone went over too. That's not good news for us. And they did Can not you leave. read the most positive review, please? I, there are no positive reviews that are written. <laughs> like the, the, the three written someone, reviews are all negative. It was the coward's review of just I think it Ben five came stars in there. I think a bunch of people on. gave it two stars and Ben <laughs> gave it five. Like, I think, I, I think that's probably what happened. <laughs> that sounds um, realistic. Yeah. Sounds like our old our our good lad ben shapiro but now it's probably time that we uh we dive into porn generation we uh Let's we do get, this we get face deep in the porn generation don't you think we could all get time saved if ben shapiro just admitted he was bad at sex i mean it's not that he's bad at sex it's that he's terrified of it in in a manner that like completely to use an old term completely like uh uh it, like He's he's clearly deeply frightened by the idea that other people enjoy sex. Like that's what's going on with Ben Shapiro. Um, he's he is scared that there are people out there fucking and enjoying it. Uh, and I think and it's he's because scared that he he's, doesn't he, get he doesn't. it. Yeah. And the only thing to do when you don't get something is to hate it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's. He's he's just on the edge of being of the incel mindset in a lot of ways. Like like he's framing it as like everybody's having all this sex and it's like super immoral and it's it's damaging society. And the incel line is that like a small number of like hypersexual men are having sex with all of the women and women just want to take all of the big chad. Like that's that's the incel line. And Binz is fifteen percent. You know away from that line but but not that far and some of it's just using slightly different terms um and i think that also ties into like the fear of like trans people and queer culture in sure. general because like can you imagine that uh, not only are people having sex and enjoying themselves but they might be doing it in a way that he has not thought of yet yeah and i, like, I think that i'm yeah. sure if no one told him about going down on women he like would have never considered it. Not that he considers it now, but I'm, I mean, I'm, like it just wouldn't occur to him. I am certain that he thinks it should be illegal to to perform oral sex. <laughs> I uh, agree. Yeah, and he also thinks butts should be illegal. Yeah, he definitely thinks butts should be illegal. Um, all right, so I was just looking into um, one of the sources, Ben. So, like, after... You remember when we were talking last time, we kind of ended on Ben, ben talking about this young woman, Katie, who he interviewed about sex ed, who was like, yes. yeah, it was fine. I felt like I got good sex ed. I didn't have sex until I was, like, a, you know, 19. Uh, and she was like, and they broke Katie. Yeah, and yeah, and Ben was like, look at... I mean, sure, she's well-adjusted and successful and doing well at an Ivy League institution, but what other damage could there be that we can't see? Like, 
<laughs> okay, so he goes from like he talks about Katie and like how like uh, he, he's got this like his actual case study of someone who went through this sex ed he's horrified by is that like yeah you know eventually I had sex and it was fine and I feel good about you know healthy about where I am and she seems to be doing great and so like the case study he brings up to I to point out how bad all this actually is is a book by Tom Wolf about a fictional girl named Charlotte Simmons um and I I read into this we we made fun of the fact last time just that like he's his he's arguing that like this is evidence of how teens actually are. This book written by a man who was in his 60s uh, when he <laughs> published this book. And to, and it's also, I read more about it because it's like one of the most panned and hated Tom Wolfe books. So like this book about young people, like 19 year olds in 2004, written by Tom Wolfe. Everyone has a pager and the internet is never mentioned. <laughs> Look, no one knows more about young people than old people. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows fucking this. Tom Wolf. <laughs> it's very funny. Um, so one of the people he brings in as a source after this is a uh, Kay Heimowitz, um, who is the author of a book called Ready or Not: Why Treating Children as Small Adults Endangers Their Future and Ours. Um, and she, uh, I, I kind of looked into this lady a little bit, um, like uh, by a little bit being her Wikipedia. Um, and I found a couple of quotes from her articles that people have pulled out. Here's one from a wall street journal editorial. Marital breakdown is not rampant across the land. It is concentrated among low income and black couples. Americans seem to have a lot of trouble grasping this fact, probably because so much public space is taken up by politicians, celebrities, and journalists with marriage on the skids. Um, she argues that like, uh, uh, divorce is declining among well-educated white people. Um, and that couples are happier than ever. Um, which I, I don't think the evidence suggests. (laughs) Yeah. Um, well, I mean the divorce rate in recent years has been declining. It was not in 2000, uh, uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. But it's, I believe it, it's, it's because fewer and fewer yeah. people are getting married. Yes, a lot fewer people. That'll are account yeah. for less divorce. It's kind of yeah. how that goes. Um, so yeah, he cites uh, shortly after he's talking about Katie. He cites Kay Heimowitz's book "Ready or Not: What Happens When We Treat Children as Small Adults," and in that, Kay argues that anti-culturalists uh, are people who believe that childhood sexuality, left on its own, free of social interference, will flourish and grow in healthy ways. So, like that's her attitude is that like. If you just let kids kind of do what comes naturally um, and provide them with grow information up and become yeah. perverts, yeah, well, yeah, it's anti-cultural to do that. It's anti-cultural to not try and take control of the direction of your child's sexuality and dictate it. Um, and then Ben quotes a long passage from Kay's terrible book. Drained of all feeling but physical pleasure, rationalized into Philofax personal organizer entries, the sex given to us by this ministry is little more than techno-fantasy. They do not see the alternately insecure and grandiose, idealistic and crude, perpetually glandular teenager most of us know. Their teenager, like that of so many other experts, is rational, self-aware, and autonomous. Information is all these kids need, they say. Information and some deprogramming to counteract society's continuing efforts to pervert their healthy sexual natures. So now we have a nation of teenagers who are information rich but knowledge poor they and their 10 year old brothers and sisters for that matter may be adults when it comes to technical information certainly their putative sophistication about sexual matters is the subject of endless head shaking by parents in the media but as they approach graduation in the anti-cultural school of self-sufficiency they remain predictably illiterate when it comes to real human connection okay so the reason my face looks like this is because i'm still trying to get over perpetually glandular Perpe- oh. yeah glandular yeah it's this idea like teens are so controlled by their their emotions and so uh, that, that you have to that you have to parents have to have total control over them so th- this idea that like my my parents had that like as your parent it is my job to exercise total control over you if i think you're doing something that's not healthy which um is bad and makes your kid not want to talk to you for years by the way, it, it's if, if not, parents happen to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's not a great uh, sign when your child is afraid to tell you anything that has yeah, to do with when you, their it, it, authentic sexual development. And it is like what it's this thing where like there's always a germ of truth in this thing. And the germ of truth is that, well, yeah, teenagers aren't done developing like they're they're not adults. Uh, they shouldn't be treated entirely as adults. They 
don't have the kind of impulse control that we expect adults to have. But the only way they get that kind of control and become adults is by being given greater and greater autonomy and power over their own lives and information to make good choices and space to make choices and mistakes. Like, and I don't think, I don't think Ben ever got that. I think Ben was directed like a, like a fucking missile from the time he was a child by his, his family to like become this. Uh, so I guess I get why he agrees with that, but it is, it's this terror you see in Kay's book and in Ben's book about like giving teenagers a chance to just like be themselves and figure out who that is, that, that, that to them is like not just scary, but like obviously abusive is, is their attitude towards just like, yeah, kids should be allowed to figure shit out for themselves, which I mean, I I think is the basis of a healthy society. (laughs) I think honestly, I think that's the as someone who has zero children. um, I think that's the thing that seems the hardest about having a teenager is so much of their understanding is so advanced, but they're not done developing yet. Their brain will keep changing well into their twenties. Yeah. So to treat them as full on adults is wrong. That's why we don't date teenagers. Yep. Unless we are morally corrupt. Um, And it is also why, when teenagers get accused of crimes, it's a different thing. Your brain is not really able to to um, make the same decisions and understand consequences and understand priorities in the same way yeah. that an adult's brain is. That is what that is. So I'm sure the hard thing about raising a teenager is walking that line of like, yeah. I want you to be safe, but also yeah. I want you to be a person that learns how to make your own decisions. And it seems like Ben thinks the safest thing is to... Well, never let anyone make any decisions. And then that way they will learn everything they need to know. Well, actually, he thinks the safest thing is to lie to them. Well, same thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. So he, 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 he quotes Dr. Drew Pinsky, uh, host of Love Line, when she says, as a peer program, <laughs> the sort of scare tactics that are used with abstinence only education uh, really don't seem to work. And this is something, there's a lot of statistics backing this up. Abstinence only education does not reduce the number of teens fucking each other or teen pregnancies or ST. Like, it's not good. Uh, it's fine to tell kids that it's okay to be abstinent. That's perfectly reasonable. But like abstinence only education is not reasonable and doesn't work. And there's a lot of documentation. There's so many that. studies that prove mm-hmm. that. Also, ben, Dr. Drew, red flag. Yeah, I mean, but do- Dr. Drew comes across as the good guy in this because he Which here's, is here's how Ben rare. responds to Dr. Drew. Yes, using scare tactics is wrong in most situations, but when the subject Uh. cannot comprehend the harmful consequences of an action not yet taken, then fear is an appropriate motivator to inhibit such an action. It's always comical to watch a parent engage a two-year-old child in a Socratic dialogue about why the kid can't cross the street without an adult present. A two-year-old child can't understand the concept of death, just as a ten-year-old child can't understand the crucial emotional loss and desensitization suffered as a result of sex without rules fear of consequences whether those consequences are spiritual or physical is a critical component to teaching restraint the fuck is sex without rules sex without that's like because it's, it's one of those things it's like people, kids hey, ben, are just like naturally doing snm without safe words because that's hey, what it sounds like I don't you know because and a perfectly a thing that is both would be both consistent with conservatism and also in a thing that no human being could agree with is if you just said 10 year olds sh- shouldn't be having sex they're not ready to have sex Done. a statement 100 percent of reasonable people agree with Done. ben doesn't say that he understands they can't handle sex without rules like like it's kind of scary that he's making that distinction that he's, he's like, like the danger is that a ten, pederasty loophole, ten, 10 year olds might loopy. be having rule sex i don't think 10 year olds should be fucking period ben like what kind of rules would make it okay <laughs> only if I you take uh, them out to dinner first and buy them pokemon well i i mean i don't know if, if this is what ben is saying i think he's just a bad writer but like one of the yes. obvious things is that, like, it's actually very easy to marry 12, 13, 14 year olds as an adult in a lot of U.S. states uh, yep. if the parents agree. And it's specifically because there are religions where that chunks of Christianity in the U.S. where shit like that happens, where like 14 year olds get married off and nobody uh, on the right is fighting to stop it because 
it's part of their culture um, to marry off children. It's not like you say what you want about it. They, they don't they don't fight that shit. Um, not that there aren't Christians who fight that shit, but like the, the right as an organized political force is making no inroads to stop these like weird fucking religious kind of culty marriages that happen all over the fucking country. Um, it's great. It's good shit, Sophia. Fucking lucky. Oh, he brings up Katie again. He takes a shot at he takes a shot at our girl Katie. How Why? fucking dare you? Oh, I'm sure Katie, if you're listening, if you're the I think Yale student who Ben Shapiro interviewed about sex, first off, you did great. Second, hit hit us up. I'm really curious about how that conversation with Ben went. Agreed. And also yeah. way to just keep your head about yourself, mm-hmm. Katie, when questioned yeah. about sorry all you had to talk to ben shapiro about your sex life that that can't have been easy good for you your mental health or your sex life yeah uh social liberals also argue as katie does that kids will have sex sooner or later so it's better to prepare them for it while they're young this kind of cynical resignation has less to do with realism than with promoting a certain political agenda in reality social liberals abandon determinism whenever it conflicts with their moral outlook they say that educating kids about cigarette use means telling them to say no under all circumstances instead of teaching them that if they do decide to smoke they should use filters to minimize their health risks. Oh, ben, how are you going to buy <laughs> cigarettes without filth? Unless, unless Ben Shapiro thinks there's a shitload of third graders out there rolling their own cigarettes. Which He's like, I, I love know the them. image they're, of. They're a strict Pall Mall community. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bunch of kids standing around the, the stick ball pitch, like one handed rolling cigarettes, smoking them with a thousand yard stare. I mean, I guess in Ben uh, Shapiro's America, that's the kind of shit you got to watch out for. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when he gets coal mining legalized for children again, there'll be a lot of a lot of seven year olds <laughs> one handed rolling their cigarettes as they wait to go down on the fucking elevator into the dark. Yeah. But please don't let them have sex without rules. Because as long as they're not fucking, be Ben's fine with it. Sex at seven. <laughs> just not without yeah. rules. It also been Ben <laughs> telling kids to just say no to drugs, including cigarettes isn't a liberal thing that's that's all of american politics for like 20 years republicans and democrats were lockstep step about that shit like the democrat joe biden was a big part of the whole mandatory minimum shit you tell me you want to pretend to me that conservatives and liberals were not both lockstep about just say no policies i'll call you a fucking liar ben shapiro True. ron paul's the only guy who gets who, who, who's I, I i don't think falls into that on the right because whatever else you can say about him, he was consistent on that. Um, yeah, it's fucking wow, Ben. Um, <laughs> Social liberals want to prevent children from knowing anything about gun use instead of training children to use firearms responsibly. Apparently, kids won't use guns sooner or later if we tell them no. Well, okay, n- number one, I agree, Ben. There's 400 million guns in the country. Kids should probably be given a little bit more in- instruction on like what they are and how they work. They're basic aspects of American life. There's an argument to be made. But... Most kids will never have a gun. Most Americans don't own guns. A hundred percent of Americans own genitals and pretty close to a hundred percent of American adults have sex at some point. Um, it, there's just not like a comparison between the two. And for another thing, like a gun is a thing that you can buy. Sex is a thing that human beings kind of inherently do to make more people. It's like it, there's not comparing the two. Or One is just for pleasure. fundamental. <laughs> yeah. It's like saying like, well, we don't teach kids how to drive in school, but we teach them nutrition. It's like, well, yeah, because not all kids are going to own cars, but they'll all eat like you could argue. <laughs> maybe we should have something in high school that like teaches kids about car. like whatever. That's a, like, I'm not going to fight against it. But like one thing is more basic than the other. Ben, um, you also can't kill anybody. Well, it's harder to. Um, with to sex. kill people with sex. Yeah. yeah, it can be done. It can be done. Um, 
Most social liberals would prefer that kids be sexualized younger so that they can become more tolerant of deviant lifestyles and what everyone used to acknowledge as immoral choices. The liberal sexual agenda underlies the teaching of sex education. As David Campos, author of Sex, Youth, and Sex Education, a reference handbook proclaims, to achieve a sexually healthy lifestyle, youth must acquire a positive and comfortable attitude about sex. Frank and fact-based discussions about topics once considered taboo are essential. Abortions, condoms, masturbation, oral sex, and homosexuality Sexuality are among the topics to be found in comprehensive sex education programs. Obviously, that that fucking terrifies Ben. Um, and he responds to that by saying Katie's statements that she can't remember any moral judgments being made sums up today's sex education. Because Ben thinks that masturbation oh, and condoms okay. and homosexuality and oral sex. We do, he does think oral sex is immoral. Clearly, anytime um, anyone comes, he thinks it's immoral. Essentially, yeah. Unless unless you're trying to make Ben Shapiro's kids. Which he only feels a little bad about. No, uh, he doesn't want you to come then either. Yeah, he doesn't want you to come. Because then the kids are tainted forever with the sin yeah. of pleasure. Who wants that? Yeah. You want them um, to become joyless automatons just like you. Yeah. Oh, boy. So Ben now quotes another woman. A 20, he's, he's, he's careful to let us know she's a 23-year-old black woman from Harvard Law, uh, April Cornell. Um Wow, he had to meet a black person for this? He really did Well, he says out. he did. I don't actually know if any of these are real people. Um, but she says, being a teenager sucks. Teenagers have way more choice today than they had 50 years ago. I have way more choice than my parents did when they were 15 or 16. It never would have occurred to my mom not to decide not to have sex or, not, or decide not to use drugs. There are decisions I had to make as opposed to this is the way it is. I think kids are being forced into choices they're not ready to handle. Um, which is an interesting attitude, I guess, but I don't... Uh, like think makes much sense um i guess i disagree with you april and the statistics disagree with you too because again kids are choosing to have sex less um i wonder if i can find april cornell if she's an actual person she probably changed her name after she, to her it came out in this book yeah i would i would want to um oh this may not be a real person um, April yeah. Corn. I found an. I I typed in April Cornell Harvard because Ben let us know that she worked at Harvard, and the the only result that came up was a Harvard Crimson article about April Cornell, which is a store that sells like New England aesthetic clothing. Oh God! I wonder if was Ben Shapiro just lazy? just learned that and yeah that, that he he knew that was like a I've store in New England. Since Kaiser Sosa. Yeah, yeah. It's like a store chain. Um. Oh no. And there is an actual April Cornell who's an artist and entrepreneur. She was born in Montreal, Canada, and she's pretty white. I, I, and I, in fairness, I don't think has said any of the things Ben. No, is but the other this person may not he be a real person. Was, also, was Ann Taylor, and then right after her, uh, <laughs> yeah. Diane von Furstenberg. It was uh, a list of yeah. really that's diverse fascinating. women. I, yeah. I wonder. Like, I can't <laughs> comprehensively say that that's not a real person, but it's very funny that when I type that in in Harvard, I don't get any kind of alumni or anything i get uh the well, April wait till Cornell you hear store. from his friend lane bryant and then yeah. also his friend stella mccarthy and, uh, <laughs> and also he, he quotes a, a friend and roommate of hers so next fun. that i'm <sighs> i wonder if this is real one sec i'm trying to dig into this now yeah. Um, does it, does his friend uh, Walmart have or, anything to no, say? Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, he quotes the next after he talks to April, he quotes Michelle McCoy, uh, her um, her roommate apparently or friend. And yep, I'm not finding any any references to her as working at Harvard at all either, um, or being a student at Harvard at all either. So so nothing nothing comes up on either of these people. I don't know that I think they're real. I, I wonder if Ben made up all of these people. I wonder if Katie's You'd even love real. To see it. Or perhaps Katie's real and he felt like he had to make up other Harvard students or other Ivy League students to like make a different point. Because they're saying, like, here's what he here's the quote he puts in Michelle's mouth. I think there's more pr a lot more pressure because so many things are accepted. There's already enough pressure on teenagers to be cool and social. And when you get rid of any moral constraints that would weigh upon them, it makes life a lot harder. I don't know that I think a person who's not Ben Shapiro would say that. That doesn't actually sound like a thing a person would say. I don't know. I, I think Ben Shapiro may have invented people for his book. I can't. I can't prove that. This is this is the just only way to prove my theory. It. 
Yeah. If you are any of these people. If you are any of these people. <laughs> if you are Ann Taylor, mm-hmm. if you are Katie, <laughs> if you are yeah. any of these people, please let us know. Because the funniest thing would be if Katie's real, but he just invented these others to have a foil to her because she <laughs> was so reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> but you know who is having a lot of sex, Sophia? Oh, God. The people that of it. purchase these goods and services. They honey. are these ads are about to ri- are about to flow into your ears on a river of cum. Like that's that's what that's what <laughs> ha- that's what the products. <laughs> we Wait, look closer. Are. It's me. I'm on a canoe. <laughs> I'm manning the river of cum. <laughs> you need a special paddle for a cum canoe. It's it's different viscosity. It's anyway, a cum new. We call <laughs> it a cum new, new Robert. <laughs> Canum. I'm sorry. That's merch. Mm-hmm. That sail merch. the cum new. Sail sail the, the behind river cum. the bastards. Mm-hmm. Hey. I know how great your fans are. If someone would mi- like to draw <laughs> this, <laughs> this come new. <laughs> come on, give us, give us a come new. <laughs> give us, draw <laughs> us a podcast. come new as you listen to these ads ooze into your your aural cavity like a, you know, like come. Here we go. Ah, oh, we are back. How's uh how's how's it how's everyone doing? You know, thanks for checking in. A lot has changed since five seconds ago, so scarred yeah, for it's, life. It's, it's been a lot. We talked about come a good amount. Um We sure did. Oh wow. Okay. So it uh, Ben brings up this narrow the National Abortions uh Rights Action League or whatever. Um like a campaign they carried off in the Bush years to like um uh like order try to order a chastity belt from George Bush um which was i guess some sort of campaign they were going um and uh Ben's response to that is the choice not to have sex is apparently not a real choice a real choice is whether to use a condom or whether to get an abortion after having unprotected sex and it's like no Ben it's not that the choice not to have sex isn't a choice it's that saying that the the only choice should be to not have sex is not a choice you should have a choice to have sex or not have sex to have sex unprotected or using a condom to get an abortion or to carry a fetus to term you should have those all of those choices Every also, person should have all plan of those choices. B. Don't act yeah, like plan it's B. Just I'm not saying those are the only choices. The, you can come yeah. on someone's tits. Like there's mm-hmm. a lot of choices. You can use that, a dental dam. They're harder to find than you'd think, but you can use them. I know. Like, you Same have with options. diaphragms. You yeah. can use them harder to find. It, what's not it's not a real choice just saying to choose abstinence. That's not a choice. That's giving someone no option. It's just just say no is not a choice as opposed to And just to because a, you yourself are not a person that experiences horniness does Which is not fine. mean then I'm yeah. not judging you for it, but you're judging everyone who is horny. Yeah. And on the behalf of the horny and the very horny, I am very offended. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Horny action now i don't know i think look, i think look all i'm saying is i think grocery stores should have special parking for horny people right up yes at the front. i agree mm-hmm. this is what horny america looks like yeah yeah and if you park there and you're not horny people should give you shit for it what do we like, want? You don't look horny. horny. Parking. When do we want it? Now. <laughs> hey, you see this guy just pulled into the horny parking? He look <laughs> horny to you. No. <laughs> he doesn't look like he's fucked a day in his life. Let's <laughs> get him. <laughs> yeah. Horny lynch mobs <laughs> beating people who are <laughs> horny enough in the street. <laughs> he looks flaccid to me. Get him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> her panties are dry. Get her. <laughs> He's driving a Hyundai Sonata. No horny person ever drove a Hyundai Sonata. <laughs> Was that a Kia? Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, oh, no, you can nope, absolutely yeah. be horny in a Kia. That's you not, can, <laughs> I think sorry. that's the only way you can be in a Kia. That's that true. is... That is the car for fucking. Um, 
So yeah, uh, sex in the classroom is the next section. We are we are just blazing through this. It's easy enough to find anecdotal evidence regarding the dangers of comprehensive sex ed. Young teens being taught about the benefits of oral sex, masturbation, and homosexual activity, all without parental notification. The Massachusetts Department of Health creating a video in eight, 1989 explaining what to do before, during, and after sex. For, that's a... That's a bad thing to Ben. Just like, yeah, that there's that there's a, a public health video Imagine explaining knowing what how to sex do works. before, during, and after yeah. an earthquake. That assures yeah. the earthquake will take place. And it's like, you, he's framing this as like decadent modern values pushing sex. Like, my grandma was like 17 when she got married. Like, what do you... Ben, teenagers have been fucking since there have been Forever. teenagers. We might as well make sure they know the basics about what to do. Like... It's like if every teenager was born with a gun grafted onto their hand, I would be like, yeah, we definitely need to have gun training in school. They've all got one. They can't be removed. Every teenager has a gun permanently attached to their bodies. We should probably teach them how to use it. It's kind of like that, Ben. Does that make sense to you? Does comparing it to guns make it reasonable? Picture a gun dick, if you will, Ben. Mm -hmm. Imagine that bullets are cum, Ben. Mm Mm-hmm. Can you imagine this? I mean, he doesn't know how to use guns or his dick, so... It's true. Okay. It's true, yeah. Imagine you're another human. Yeah. That's a big imagination no, you're asking do for that, Ben to have. If you could do that, he could not be this much of a right-wing piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fun. So we get uh, we get a little bit of history here. Ben goes through the history of sex ed and talks about how it was initially sex hygiene, which is which is accurate. Like the first like sex ed sort of campaigns were about like venereal diseases in particular, a lot of the time spreading among soldiers and like trying to tell people like, hey, stop, here's how to not get syphilis. Right. Like that's mm-hmm. that is kind of where like a lot of it came. Um, but then he. He still gets it wrong um, because he talks about how teaching of sex hygiene was largely incorrectly couched in moral terms. The only way to cure the sexual evils thoroughly, the only way to dig them up at the roots, uh, was to prescribe the same standard of morality for a man as for a woman. Men must be as chaste as women. And like, no, Ben is actually just talking about one set. He's talking about guys like Harvey Kellogg, who, who did say that we all have to be chaste and that like you should do everything you can to not have sexual feelings. But that's separate from a lot of the medical history of sex education which while there was a moral element it was mainly because like you are going to damage your body and you are you know a member of this society or a soldier in this military and it's like your responsibility to not danger yourself like there was anyway it's just been again deletes all nuance uh from his his recollection of the historical record um because he's a goblin um yeah then we uh we get on to kinsey i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna skip through the history stuff because i'm gonna guess ben gets all of it more or less that incomplete um Today's sex ed experience for most members of the porn generation is wedded to the idea of permissiveness and tolerance for all sorts of behaviors. As inherently sexual beings, the argument goes, our sexuality should not and cannot be contained by any system of morality. Sexuality is as much a natural characteristic as race. No. Ooh, boy. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Please. Please let another ignoramus fucking talk about race. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, I, he, he zooms right over this. Because, uh, he again, he's talking about, like, how shitty it is. Like, one of the things he s- strikes as being bad is that uh, no form of sexual ex- expression may be condemned and all must be taught. Which, like, man, I went through sex ed in the period you're writing about, and we barely learned about like sexual intercourse like there was no talk about blowjobs there was no talk about like anal sex other than like the vague reference that like a condom is always a good thing to have if you're having sex like this idea that kids are being instructed in elaborate sexual acts has like no basis in actual sex ed programs and not just that but even the knowledge we received about sexual organs was wildly like yeah patchy i guess yeah patchy would would be a good term for it you know i mean i don't think that most people who went through sex ed could tell you where the fallopian tubes are exactly how many eggs a woman has i can tell you because anytime like my friend valerie has a joke about how many eggs a woman makes and you can tell by only the women laughing and not even Mm -hmm. all of them that 
men do not know how many eggs women make in a lifetime. And I know while I'm saying this, men are Googling this right now. And that's Yeah, cool. it's like, what, 40? You should Google it because it's important. <laughs> um, the point is, we don't learn enough. Mm-hmm. We don't learn enough. My best guy friend, only a couple years ago, I found out he, he's, he's 40. I just found out that he does. He, he thought that when a woman gets pregnant, she throws up one time. That's how she knows she's pregnant. And then she's done <laughs> because of movies, because he, that's how every movie lets you know that the character yes, is pregnant. He literally she, she pukes thought once. That's funny. That all the women that he's ever heard complaining about morning sickness. He thought they meant the one time they threw up. Oh, my up. God. Yeah, that's that's fascinating because that tells you so much about like, oh, so you just like weren't around any pregnant p- people when you were when you were a kid. Like, okay. no. Yeah. I right. don't well, know. That's funny. Wild. But still, it's just yeah. completely strange. But that is how little all of us know. Yeah. And it's like, I mean. Uh, men don't often know much about their own sexual organs. It's just that thankfully the operation is generally pretty simple. Um, and uh, yeah, just the, the level of like basic ignorance of really important facts of, of sex and of STDs of like uh, stuff like herpes, like um, and how it spread and like how common it is. Like that's it, the, we're terrible. Like the idea, like not only has been wrong about, like what kids are actually doing. Um, but he's completely off about the degree to which any of the education that does exist is explicit because it's barely adequate in the best of situations. Like barely adequate is like the gold standard for sex ed in, in most public schools. Um, and it's like, it, I, I, it, it's telling because he, he knows more or less what's being taught. He just thinks that it's obscene that like that the 16 year old would know at all the basic process by which, uh, two people have sexual intercourse or the idea that anal sex is an option. Like the fact that they know that is abhorrent to him. Um, it's not a matter of like kids being shown pornography. It's that they should not know these are options. And it's, I think a lot of it is that like, if they don't know that it's possible to have gay sex, then Ben thinks they won't be gay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that if they, they didn't know that trans was a thing, they wouldn't be trans. Yeah. Yeah. It's the uh, like that. That is why he's so angry at kids being taught things, because, um, again, they're not doing things. They're not doing sex at like a, a sexual stuff at any kind of a higher rate. We, we know this. And I have to think Ben knows this unless he's even more incompetent than I think he is, because his real problem is that people are expressing themselves physically in ways that make him uncomfortable because he's a fucking goblin and he doesn't think that should be allowed. Um, and you see that at the end of this segment when he's talking about like the immorality of sex ed again. These radical sex educators are correct in one sense. Sex shouldn't be shameful, but just because people have natural desires and drives doesn't legitimate those natural desires and drives in all contexts, especially outside the context of marriage. <sighs> <laughs> I think the sigh is something Ben Shapiro mm-hmm. hears a lot in the bedroom. Yeah. And here, here we, in, and in other areas of section, <laughs> This, the attack on abstinence begins with him just being very wrong again. The public policy brilliance of comprehensive sex education is its self-justifying nature. Sex education has used skyrocketing rates of venereal disease, teen pregnancy, and sexual immorality as an excuse to teach its panoramic view of sexuality. Unfortunately, there's a, rise, a rising threat looming on the horizon for sex educators. Abstinence education. If morality can, can, can somehow be infused back into sex education, if the tolerance for all sexual activity emission may be discarded safely... The Kinseyans are out of a job. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what he thinks. How many jobs he thinks are in the Kinseyan community? <laughs> yeah. I, yes. I'm it's sure not a, not a huge industry. Then fewer than he thinks. It I kind literally of seems like know. yelling about abstinence is much more lucrative. Yeah. I literally know the curator, curator at the Kinsey Institute, and I can tell you, not <laughs> are they a lot rolling of jobs in the dough? over there. <laughs> yeah. Also, no. shout out Rebecca. Ah, good, good for you, Rebecca. And, uh, yeah. Um, 
the social liberals claim that abstinence education doesn't work because, of course, abstinence is impossible. Denying our young people accurate information about sexual health will not prevent unintended pregnancies or the spread of sexually transmitted diseases. It will, however, prevent them from making responsible and informed decisions about their health and futures, growled William Smith, director of public policy at some organization called SICAS that de- deals with sex ed. I love that Ben has to ha- like he said what he's saying is so reasonable, but that Ben has to color it by saying he growled it. Um, it's very funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh. <sighs> yeah, it's, um, oh, okay. So he has, he cites another student. Um, so this is Ann Kim of the university of Washington. And this, this person who been says exists, apparently said this within this culture where sex sells everything from shampoo to gum george bush has proposed doubling the amount of federal funding for abstinence only sex education in the classroom it's a farce to assume that exclusively teaching no sex is safe sex will prevent teens from having it this message dissolves in the real world where teens regardless of whether they're sexually active want to know and talk about sex so that's him citing someone that i'm sure he disagrees with that i still don't know if i think that's a person other than ben I wonder oh, if he may. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can find evidence that this person. Yeah, exists. good luck. <laughs> I just want to know. They're sitting right next to Ann Taylor, so don't, yeah. don't you even worry about that. Oh well, maybe uh, there's a, there's an assistant manager at Sunrise Dental who graduated from the University of Washington recently. Um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say that I think Ann Kim might be a real person. Yay, Ben! Oh yeah, she's a doctor you of pharmacy. You actually talked to a human being. For yeah, this. yeah, and and uh, so yeah, it may have made there may be some real people in this. Fascinating. I do believe that Ann Kim is a person. Um, so that 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 may and Ann Kim seems to be saying a reasonable thing, um, even though I don't I don't I still don't know how much I believe that she said sex sells everything from shampoo to gum, um, but maybe. Maybe that just seems like such a Ben Shapiro line. Well, I was just going to say also that, um, yes, uh, yes, the extremely sexual gum commercials. <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking of double mint twins, yeah. right? Bubblicious. What, what's the sexiest gum commercial? You've oh, ever uh, seen? Big League Chew. <laughs> nothing not- makes me want nothing <laughs> makes me want to fuck like Big League Chew. <laughs> I thought that was a candy. It is. It's it's gum. Oh, but it, it, it's gum and a candy. Uh, it's 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 gum and a candy. Yeah. Okay. I've never had Big League Chew. Um. All right. So the next line that the that Ben has at the end of this or during this abstinence section is the truth is it's too early to tell whether abstinence education can work at a wide level. There have been no conclusive studies one way for another. And That's the not that true. Do, it's funny because he says, and the studies that do exist conflict with each other. Now, I found a 2011 study. Um, it's pretty fucking conclusive. Yeah, when I, I found was working it, at Planned Parenthood in 2000. Four, it was already something that everybody knew. Yeah, I found a 2011 study um, from the uh, U.S. National Library of Medicine um, that seems to be pretty comprehensive uh, and includes the line. The data clearly show, show clearly that abstinence only education as a state policy is ineffective in preventing teenage pregnancy and may actually be contributing to the high teenage pregnancy rates in the U.S. Um yeah, so uh, there's one study, and then I found another study from 2010 um, that I think is like his uh, like his best case study, which is from 2010 that um, in the archives of pediatric adolescent medicine, which found that abstinence only intervention was effective in getting very young teens to delay sexual initiation, but the program is not the same as the abstinence until marriage programs funded by the Bush administration. Nope. Um, but it's very funny that he's like, there's no conclusive studies and the studies that do exist conflict with each other. Well, is it possible that the studies that say that it doesn't work are pretty conclusive? And then there's some shit studies <laughs> that say that it does work uh, because one study, the study he cites, um, um, yeah, the study that he cites is uh, which claims that women who pledge to remain virgins until marriage are 40 percent less likely to have a child out of wedlock. That comes from the Heritage Foundation. Yeah, which is a right wing <laughs> think tank that is not at all a credible, uh, unbiased source on anything. Yeah. Um, 
They are not scientists. They are right-wing ideologues paid to find things that argue for conservative causes. Ding, ding, ding. And, if I'm not mistaken... Yeah, yeah, we'll look into that later. Um, but they do publish a lot of stuff on, uh, on abstinence-only education. Um... And in fact, I think I found the report, yeah, from 2002. So that's also funny, is that like this thing he's citing as evidence that it works is from 2002. We have 2010 and 11 studies um, that I found in like a second of Googling that uh, showed that there's like it it, it not it's either ineffective the programs he suggests or the biggest study says actively harmful. Um, But again, Ben doesn't actually like... He does very selective research. And in fact, I keep saying, I can't see anything in this 2013 book. He keeps citing shit from 2002. Um, when there's data, 2010, 11, 13, 2009 studies I found, like there's a lot more. But they don't fit my narrative, okay? 2003, 2002, 2003, that's all where it's from. And again, that's a decade ago at this point in a field where there's rapidly being progress and a lot of studies being made. In addition to the fact that like he's trying to talk like the kids that there's data on from 2003 aren't the generation he's primarily writing about um, in 2013 because those people are all college graduates in their mid-20s by 2013. Um, I don't It's just, it's so gross. It's like so comprehensively... Uh, Manipulating data is also yeah, like very yeah. unethical. <laughs> Oh, but good. And now we get into there's a whole we get into this it ends with a whole rant on Hillary Ch- Clinton. There's a sub hat chapter called the president's good night blowjobs talking Jesus about the Clinton Christ. impeachment scandal. The um, fuck does that have to do with that? Oh, he's it's just like the idea that it's this thing that like despite all of the fucked up shit the Clintons actually did. The worst thing is that Bill got a blowjob, um, which is like. There's a lot that's messed up about his relationship with Monica Lewinsky, primarily the power imbalance between a young 20-year-old yeah. intern and the president of the United States. Yeah, and f- fucking ruining her life for the, but, for decades to come because her name became associated with this uh, thing yeah. that somehow made him be cool and somehow made her be a dumb slut. Oh, yeah, wait, he, patriarchy? That's how? Okay. Even even within just the, the, the me, like, it, just the subject, if you're, like, ignoring the fact that he let the Rwandan genocide happen or fucked up so badly in Bosnia or was presided yes. over a, a campaign of sanctions that killed hundreds of thousands in Iraq. Like, if, you, if you're, if you're yes. dropping all of that by the wayside, right? Yes. And if you're just focusing on the sex part of Bill Clinton, all that stuff you mentioned, perfectly valid things to criticize Clinton over really solid evidence of arms that of harms that his sexual behavior had. You could also talk about the very credible sexual assault allegations against him. That's not what Ben finds most offensive. Here's Ben. Here's the bottom line. Without the Lewinsky scandal, millions of children would not have had to hear about this issue until reaching maturity, that issue being blowjobs. Instead, oral sex and masturbation with cigars. (laughs) Yeah. Can you tell on yourself more than that? It's Uh. the thing where it's like, oh, you want to criticize Bill Clinton for like his his sexual uh, uh, like behaviors? Like, absolutely. There's like, yeah, let's 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 talk about that. But there's a lot that's like really fucked up that he did that we should attack him for. Oh, you're angry because kids heard about blowjobs like that's what's offensive about bill clinton's sex scandal to you is that like kids became aware of the existence of oral sex um you little loser yeah oh my god wow and even quotes that's incredible so he quotes a letter from uh agonized mother of four elizabeth avery shelton who wrote a letter to the <laughs> Oh boy, Elizabeth. Please, who wrote when a letter, I die, bury me with the inscription "Agonized, agonized mother, mother of Four. This woman wrote a letter to the editor of the Seattle Times and stated, "I would like it to be known before her movie and book deal comes out that I want an apology from Lewinsky for being solely responsible for me having to explain oral sex to my four children, ages twelve to eight. <laughs> now, Ben does note that Clinton <laughs> owes parents an apology as well, but like." What the fuck? Like, why would she be solely responsible? Like, bro, like, this is on what you. What the fuck? <laughs> not that I think like that's you, not lady. within the grand scheme of like things presidents do that are bad. The fact that kids learn blowjobs exists isn't on the scale. It's just nowhere near. Um, but the fact that he's that this woman's like <laughs> Monica Lewinsky is solely responsible for me learning about blowjobs. 
It's so sad. I feel sorry for her husband. That's fucked up. Like, imagine being that person. Of course, everything's so fucked up. There's so many people like that who think, like, who look at Bill Clinton's sex scandal and be like, well, if it weren't for her, we wouldn't be hearing about this. Like, what? (laughs) Yep. He's the president. (laughs) She's 20 and an intern. He is the leader of the country. Like, and you're putting most of the blame on her? What do you think is... And just, you know what? Shout yeah. out Monica fucking Lewinsky because she's yeah, a bad I, bitch I have no, that persevered I have no and with ended up having a good life. So good yeah. for you, Monica. Good for you. Uh, and I, I don't think uh, capitalized on blowjobs in any way. Uh, just it's so gross. She started a purse line. Yeah, good for her, Monica. She you can join wanted... that other lady who's just a, a clothing brand that been quoted in his next book. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do a second ad break? I, uh, I'm going to do one right now, Sophie, because you know what time it is. Goods and services, goods and services. That's right, motherfuckers. Ah, uh, we're back. All right. So let's, uh, let's, let's close out by Ben's section. We're 11% of the way into this book. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so much to talk about here. Um, uh, parental abdication. Comprehensive sex education has taken power out of the hands of parents. The current system has the schools teaching amoral permissiveness and forcing parents with standards to unteach their own children. And parents have to become too lazy to do anything about it. Instead of opting their kids out of sex ed, it's easier for them to avoid the messy birds and bees conversation. Leave it to the government types to teach the kids about standards of morality. The social liberals who have promulgated this anti-parent system are pleased with the result. Their goal was never to allow parents the authority to teach their children. It was to shill for the god of tolerance. Government is the most easily available tool to use. Why does he think liberals don't have kids? Yeah, why does he think liberals are any comfortable, more comfortable talking to their kids than concern about sex than concern? It's, and it's this idea that like school teach again, I went through sex ed in this period. There was no moral lessons whatsoever. And it was so incomplete that I then went to my parents with questions because I didn't understand things and I did not get good answers to them because my parents weren't comfortable discussing it with me. Like, which is the problem, which is why yep. kids do stupid shit. Because they're not being taught to do things safely um, or being taught to do things without shame or like it's just it's all very frustrating. Um, And everything Ben says is wrong. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I think you got it. Yeah. Well, Sylvia, how are you? uh, How are you doing? Dry as a bone, my friend. Dry as a bone. Oh, good. I do want to note that at the end of this chapter, Ben says that we're, we're parents are starting to wake up uh, because a poll in 2003 showed strong support for abstinence education. Um, again, all stuff from like a decade after this book is published. Um, also, like, are you calling parents and you're like, hey, would you rather your kid not be fucking? Because they're all going to say yes. Yes. I don't. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, 98% of likely voters based on a Planned Parenthood study support sex education in high school. Um, let's see. Here's the Seekus survey. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's the same study. Um, I wonder if there's a less biased source we can find because I just want to see if he's well. Um, Texas voters support abstinence plus sex education, which is sex education that uh is medically accurate and doesn't only talk about abstinence um which seems better than what i probably got uh so that's overwhelmingly supported by three quarters of voters including 68 percent of republicans in texas um so yeah it does seem like ben is wrong on that too uh massachusetts voters strongly support sex ed um yeah it it seems like abstinence only education has very little support because it doesn't work at all and uh, and everybody who's reasonable knows it ben was wrong about this as he's wrong about everything else sophia you got any pluggables sure thanks you can check out my other two podcasts um private parts unknown about love and sex around the world and 420 Day Fiance with Miles Gray from the Daily Zeitgeist, where we do hilarious stone recaps of 90 Day Fiance. And you can also, of course, get my album, 
Father's Day, anywhere that you buy albums, but mainly SophiaAlexandra.com. SophiaAlexandra.com. And you can find me on the internet somewhere. If you, if you, if you hold me in your heart, I'll come to you. I'll find you. I'll, I'll, I'll burrow through hell to get to you. That's my promise to you, random listener, with my voice in your ear. I've seen you burrow. You're good. I'm a good burrower. I'm a good burrower. My uncle was a... Master burrower? Was a... I was trying to think of an animal that burrows, but my, uh... My... Possum? Do possums burrow? Seems like possums would burrow. Beaver. Like they'd be good at that. Beavers? Yeah, they burrow. They burrow pretty good. All right. Ferrets. Well, find your own animal and celebrate burrowing <laughs> with your loved ones this holiday season. Bye.